Thank you very much, Inusi, for the introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's great to be back in Riga. It's always nice to be here. Um, and of course, it's always nice to talk about European law, although it's sometimes a bit confusing. The law, not the talking, of course. Um, the topic I will try to address today is one that sort of um, is connected to both the agenda uh, that the European Commission is trying to uh, follow on the digital single market as the first one, and of course the agenda that the, the European Commission has uh, in the field of consumer protection law as the second. Um, I think that the, 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 the main topic um, that we will discuss will be a bit shorter. Of course, we will deal with geo-blocking and digital content cross-border portability, but not with the whole issue because it's too broad. Um, I have therefore decided to sort of narrow it down uh, as far as geo-blocking is concerned to price discrimination, which I think is probably the most important issue anyhow. Now, firstly, let's see what geo-blocking really is. Uh, as we are all consumers, and as we all really, well, at least the data shows that, love to shop on the internet, um, we all know what geo-blocking is, and we probably have all met it in our lives. Now, geo-blocking usually happens because a seller, a trader, which um, operates on an online platform, tries to sort of, um, well, to sort of get the most money out of all the consumers it tries to reach. So geo-blocking is usually, not, not always, but usually connected to price discrimination. This means that, of course, a trader will try to um, sell a good A for X in member state A, for X plus 20% in member state B, for X minus 10 member state C, and so on and so forth. We all know that from the so-called real markets, don't we? And the European Union, in certain areas, acknowledged that price discrimination is a good thing. This is why we have the block exemption for motor vehicles distribution agreements, which, to an extent, of course, are nothing else but a geo-blocking regulation. A car can be sold for 22,000 euros in Latvia, for 25,000 euros in Slovenia, for 26,000 in, in, in the Netherlands, for 25,000 in Portugal, and so on and so forth. Why? We'll see that in a second. Price discrimination is only one of the sort of modes of geo-blocking. The other ones are more closely connected to the digital world. For example, existence of special local websites, which you also know, I'm sure, you're familiar with those. You wanted to buy Nikes, you went to the American Nike.com website, you found your sneakers, and then, of course, well, the computer said no. The computer said, well, you have to go to the Latvian website, where, you know, those sneakers are not available. Or you have to go to the UK website, where they might be even more expensive. Yeah? The funny thing is that they might be cheaper on a Slovenian website, on a Latvian website, on a website in the countries with lower, you know, buyer power. And that we should keep in mind because it's an important thing. What else? Well, you went, you found something, you wanted to buy that purse, uh, that, 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 that bag, whatever you wanted, um, glasses. Um, it's all there. You see the price, you type in your name, you type in your address, the website accepts it, and then it says, well, you don't have a credit card from Germany. You can't buy this. Or you don't have a credit card from Spain. You can't buy it, right? Um, this, this is, well, it did happen in Europe, not as much as, of course, when you wanted to buy something from the U.S. The U.S. were adamant about it. You had to have a, a credit card that was issued by, the, by, by, by an American bank and so on. But, but this is, of course, one of the possible ways of geo-blocking. And, of course, the difference in goods portfolio between local sites. This is what I already talked about. 
you come to one website, I don't know, uh, let's not talk about Nikes all the time, um, you go to, to the Apple website, same thing will happen. You will see a set of goods on a UK website, it might be different to a set of goods on a Portuguese website. You're from Portugal, you wanted to buy the thing that they have on the UK website, tough luck, no go. Now, the European Union, especially the Parliament, was really adamant about trying to stop this um, actions by, by traders. And of course, a lot of papers were written on that. Um, and we now finally have, and I'll go back then, this. The Regulation 2018-302, which came into power in March of this year. So it's quite new. Um, this regulation with this, again, elaborate name as we're used to in Europe, on addressing unjustified geo-blocking and other forms of discrimination based on customers, nationality, place of residence, and so on, covers many types of geo-blocking and, tr well, I will say it, tries to prohibit them, but, well, fails miserably, actually. Um, this is what happened. Um, now, what happened was this. They have now prohibited price discrimination. They have also prohibited discrimination on the base of the nationality, place of residence, place of establishment, establishment as far as credit cards are concerned or other means of payments are concerned. So, yes, now you can buy goods with a credit card that, that was not issued in the country of residence or establishment of the trader. Yes, you now can reserve or book even a rental car in France through a French website, um, even if you're a Slovenian. The problem is that they went too far in certain areas and they, well, I'll not say did not dare to tackle, but couldn't tackle another area. Let me be more specific. The prohibition on geoblocking does not, is not valid or does not apply to digital copyrighted content, which was probably one of the most interesting things. So Netflix is out. Hulu is out. YouTube Red is out. They're all out. Amazon is out. So even Apple Music is out, of course. Anything that has anything to do with copyrighted digital material is not covered by this regulation. So we will still not be able, probably, to, I don't know, access Google Music if, if you're from Slovenia. Because why? Well, because Google does not have any incentives to, you know, step into this minefield of copyright, uh, which we have in the European Union. Um, and, of course, Slovenia's uh, market, that's just too small. So is Latvia. So is probably Portugal. Maybe Carlos will know that Spain does not have a problem with that. France, well, neither, but uh, the smaller member states have issues with that. So why did the Commission basically compromise and said, well, we'll leave digital content, which is copyrighted, aside? Um, it still is, um, as you all know, an issue that is tightly connected to national sovereignty and to member states. Copyright is still something that member states still think of as their own. Firstly, secondly, the big players were not interested. It's very simple. It's very simple. Uh, we will see what the Commission did because it knew that it will not be able to cover digital content with um, geo-blocking reg regulation. It basically pushed through a different legislative instrument which I think is not, well, it, 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 it doesn't do what it was supposed to do. Well, we'll see that later. Uh, now, the, the problem, I said they went too far and they, went, they, they, they were too short. They were too short as far as digital content is concerned. They went too far as far as price discrimination is concerned. Um, whenever you hear a, a word discrimination, you probably sort of think, well, if you're lawyers, you sort of get this strange feeling, right? It's a bad thing. Um, well, people who delve uh, in economic issues will tell you it's not really true. Not always. As, as far as price discrimination is concerned, 
um, prior discrimination could be a good thing. Um, absent something that we call market power in competition law, prior discrimination is nothing bad. Why? Well, because it enables something that we call productive, you know, productive efficiency and also allocative efficiency. Traders which can discriminate in prices will know how much each and every one of us is prepared to pay for a certain product. So they will lower their prices for a, well, a prospect buyer who doesn't have that much money and they will, you know, sort of put it as high as possible for those who have high income. And it's good for all of us. They will go lower in prices because they will, you know, they, they, they can afford it because they'll get higher prices for higher, from higher income, income consumers. If you ban it, well, I will not say it yet, but think what will happen if you ban this, right? Now, they have banned it in the regulation, and this, these are the situations that sort of are like, um, well, poster childs, right, where price discrimination cannot happen on the basis of, again, and this is the last time I'll say it, citizenship, place of residence, place of establishment. The first one, the trader, the seller sells goods that are delivered in a member state to which the trader offers delivery or are collected at a location agreed upon with the, with the customer. Now, this is where I have a huge problem. Um, at the last Congress of the Fédération Internationale de Droit Européen, the FIDE in Estoril that was, that was held a month ago, um, this, this paragraph was interpreted as, well, situations where a buyer from a member state A wants to buy something on a platform which only delivers to member states B, C, D, E, and so on, but not to member state A where the buyer is. Now, if you read this carefully, I don't have, don't know, do we have any native speakers, any native English speakers here? Because that would be, that would be fun. I mean, because I, I don't see this in here. Seller, seller sells goods that are delivered in a member state to which the trader offers delivery or are collected at a location agreed upon with, with the customer. The second one, of course, okay, fine, yeah, in a, mem in a third member state. But the first part of the, of the sentence, of the paragraph, to me, does not convey the message that this cannot be a member state where the, where the buyer is located. Even if it is. Let's forget about that. Even if it is, you'll see what the problem, where the problem is. Now, the second, the second situation is where the seller provides electronic supplied services, such as cloud services, data warehousing, and so on and so on. And the third one, where the seller provides services which are received by the customer in the country where the trader operates. Now, these are rental cars, hotels, and so on and so on. But this one is the, probably the most important one. Which questions arise from, the, from this paragraph? Consider the situation. You are, we're all now in Latvia. We go, to web, we go to the internet, we go to a website. We find a website with a trader that does not, let's, 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 keep, it, let's keep up with the interpretation as it was at the Estoril Congress, okay? So we have a seller um, who is established in a member state A. We are now in a member state B. The seller, again, per that interpretation, will not deliver to our member state will deliver to its own member state or to other member states. In this situation, if the interpretation is correct, the seller cannot price discriminate. So he should treat us like local shoppers. You understand? Um, with that, I think we should agree and that I think to, to my mind is sound economics and sound law. But what if this interpretation is not correct? What if this basically means, well, you can never discriminate? Let me show you something. Let me show you a preamble of the uh, regulation that Recital 27 says, look, the prohibition of discrimination against customers pursuant to this regulation should not be understood as precluding traders from offering goods or services in different member states or to certain groups of customers by means of targeted offers 
including through the setting up of country-specific online interfaces. However, in those situations, traders should always treat their customers in a non-discriminatory manner, regardless of their nationality or the place of, res of residence or place of establishment, when a customer wishes to benefit from such offers and general conditions of access. Now, when you look at what the, um, the Commission itself said about this regulation, it said, well, we'll basically try to ban price, price discrimination, as far as online platforms are concerned, but we will not touch something that we call price differentiation. Now, <laughs> that's a funny thing, because price differentiation basically means what? Yes, the seller can say, um, if this good, I'm selling this good for um, X in my own country, but I will sell it for X plus 20% in your country. Why? Um, shopping, um, tr um, sorry, transport costs, and maybe some tax issues. Yeah? But that's, we're losing, right, the attraction of price discrimination, which can be good for consumers. Because I think that, and this is, well, it's, it's, it's not, I will not say that this, this is entirely mine. I mean, uh, Giorgio Monti write on this, wrote on this a couple of months ago, so did Maduro, right? The problem is, do we want uniform pricing, pricing in Europe? Because if you ask me, if I'm a trader and somebody says to me, you cannot price discriminate anymore based on nationality or pr place of residence. Now, the problem is, how will the courts or the commission understand if I discriminate on, basis, on the basis of what? Of purchase power. Is that not, again, residence or nationality? I mean, because I, you know where I'm going. I'll check the GDP, I'll check the, 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 the purchase, the, the power purchase, uh, the, the, the PPP, and I'll, I'll, what I'll do is Portugal will have, will have a price of X, while Germany will have a price of X plus 40%. That's normal. That's when I'll sell everything. If this is not possible for me, what I'll do is, what? Will I sell for X to everybody? No. X plus 40 for everybody. Because that's, what I, that's the only thing I can do. Otherwise, I'm, I'm inefficient, right? If I'll sell to X for everybody, it will, it will not fly for me. Huh? I'll try, I'll go for the higher price probably. Because the X, Portugal, I'm sorry, it could be Slovenia, sorry, uh, was probably, anyhow, you know, the goods I sold with, with, with clenched teeth because it was too cheap, right? So now I'll basically raise the prices, and I don't think that's good for consumers. Well, it's never good for consumers, is it, if prices are higher, right? Now, let's check um, the thing that um, we talked about earlier. So because the geo-blocking regulation has no, and I, I strongly repeat that, no effect on the copyrighted digital content, the commission sort of, you know, introduced, uh, well, it's a, a, the, a, the bastard child, you know, it's, it's a, the, the, they, 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 they came in with it, they were not too loud about it, it's the regulation 2017-1128 on cross-border portability of online content services in the internal market. Now, the commission said, well, if we can't ban geo-blocking for this content, we will basically do what? We'll proscribe that, well, every, um, everybody who is a seller or who offers digital content on an online platform, um, Netflix, uh, BBC iPlayer, not for a long time now, <laughs> um, Canal Plus, and so on, they, they all have basically apps which allow you to stream digital content when you're at home. And yes, people were really extremely angry because when the French went from, I don't know, from, from Toulouse right, to Riga, they wanted to watch their Canal Plus player and it didn't work. Right? Why didn't it work? Because of copyright issues. Now the Commission says, well, we have to mend this and we will mend it in a way that will basically set up a fiction, a legal fiction. Everybody who has already um, 
sort of identified themselves via a means of payment, which is usually a credit card or whatever, it can be PayPal, whatever you want, electronic payment, in their own home member state, is deemed to be identified for all the member states of the European Union. So once you, ha you are identified as, as, as me, right, for, for Netflix, you're identified as me for all the member states. So wherever I go, and you should listen to this carefully because it's really, st I think it's stupid. I should now be able to get everything I get home in Slovenia on Netflix, whatever I have, when I'm in, okay, let's say it, uh, when I'm in Hamburg. Now, the funny thing is that, um, that that was possible before the regulation. When you went to a different country, you, uh, member state, you, you know, logged into, for example, Netflix, and you got Netflix for that country. The funny thing is that Netflix for Germany has a much broader portfolio of digital content that Netflix for Slovenia. So when I came to Germany, I was pleased because I logged into the German Netflix, which was better for me. Now, what do you think? Did the commission say anything about the providers having to provide the whole portfolio for, uh, for, for, for any? No, they have to provide what I have in Slovenia, that's it. So I will not be able to sort of get the extras I would before this regulation. Now, it seems that this regulation is sort of was targeted towards people who are, um, well, averse to learning um, um, foreign languages. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but it's true. Because when you look at travaux préparatoires, it's basically all about the French-speaking people. And I'm sorry, I don't want to, don't want to be uh, chauvinist, I don't want to be exclusive, whatever. But it says, well, we have people who would want to watch Belgian dramas when they're in, I don't know, Sweden, but they can't. So, wouldn't you like to, I don't know, maybe watch a Swedish drama with, with English subtitles once in a while? Right? No. So, I think this is basically an excuse. It's, again, sort of a, you know... Uh, a legislative instrument which, yes, achieves some, some goals, but um, I, I, don't, I don't see a particular sort of benefit for the consumers in it. Uh, together with the geo-blocking regulation, which, again, is a compromise in itself, uh, this is basically a very, well, a very poor uh, beginning of the work on consumer rights in the digital market by, by the Commission, I think. Um, and I hope it, the, you know, they will fare better in the future. Thank you.